Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to do a tutorial on how to shoot S-Log2 with the Sony ZV-E10. So here we have the tripod and our ZV-E10 set right here. So let's turn on our camera right here. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to ensure we are in manual mode. So here we are inside a manual mode. So right now we have control of every single setting. We need to go into the picture profile and go down to PP7. PP7 is essentially the s log 2 picture profile. So as you can see, once you click that, because the contrast and saturation has been removed, this is a flat picture profile. Later on, we will color correct it and add some contrast and also saturation to this picture. We are going to ensure we are shooting at the 180 degree shutter roll. So now I'm shooting on 4K 25 frames per second. So we need to ensure we are at shutter speed of 50. Now I'm on 50 shutter speed and also at the aperture, it is up to you. And then we need to ensure our ISO is at 500. This is the minimum ISO of shooting as log 2. And then the most important thing right here, you can see the exposure index. It is right now plus 2.0. Does it mean that my picture is overexposed and I cannot recover all these details? There is one way to check this, which is using Zebra. So Zebra is very important here. Zebra will help you to determine whether your picture is overexposed or underexposed or not. So as you can see, this zebra is for standard color, but we are using S-Log2, so we need to set the zebra setting. So let's go to menu and find the zebra setting. Even I myself, I don't know where is the zebra setting to set. So I need to find it here. Eh, where is the zebra? So the zebra setting is on tab 2 and also page 7. Let's go to zebra setting, turn it on. So we do not want to leave the zebra level at 70. So let's leave it at custom. Let's make a custom, custom 2. So we want to ensure we are on lower limit and 100, maybe around 100. But I will just leave it at 100 and 04. So this is my zebra setting. Go back to the shooting menu. So now my zebra is on and you can see there is no zebra being shown because this picture is not overexposed. So once I leave out, once I change the shutter speed, you can start to see some zebra coming in. This zebra line are those areas which will be completely white. There will be no details in this image. So we just need to ensure that there's no zebra in our picture. If there's a little bit of zebra, that's, that's okay. So this means that we are exposing to the right. So our exposure is plus 2.0. So let's try to shoot this picture. And I will try to enter into the frame. If you do not like to see the lock footage here, you can actually go to the menu and go to the display setting. Yes, the gamma display assist. You can turn on auto assist auto or assist S lock 2, S lock 3. Yes, this will give you an idea of how your image will look like after you have color corrected it. So let's go to S lock 2 because we are shooting in S lock 2. So this is roughly how my image will look like on S lock 2 after I corrected it. And guys, if you find that when you're shooting s 2, there is a lot of color noise, you can try this setting. The black level you can maintain at zero. For the color mode, you can actually use s gamma 3 cine and then for the saturation, you can increase it to plus 200. So for the detail, it's minus 7. So you can try this setting if your s 2 image is always appearing to be very noisy with those color noise. You can try this picture profile when you are facing those color noise problem. Our ZV-10 can only shoot 8-bit color, so we cannot shoot 10-bit. So we have to do some tricks like this to ensure that our s lock profile will give us a clear image. Okay guys, so right now we are going into the Adobe Premiere Pro to color correct our S-Log2 
flat footage. You can do this with DaVinci Resolve and also Final Cut Pro. Well, the concept and the process is just roughly the same. So the first thing inside Premiere Pro, we need to open Lumetric Scope and also the Lumetric Color tab. And well, I will just drag uh, adjustment layer on top of this footage and I will perform the edit on the adjustment layer. So first thing, let's rename this to Color Correction. So this will color correct. And now you need to go to the Sony official website to download the Sony Cinema LUT from their website. So these are the conversion LUT for S-Log2 and S-Log3 and convert them inside to Rec709 color space. So right now, I'm going to convert to Rec709. Well, you can use the input LUT here for S-Log2 convert to Rec709. But I do not recommend you to do so because it is just built into the image already. So you cannot adjust your highlight anymore. You know, this highlight is just not the same as adjusting from the flat picture profile. So what you need to do is go to the creative tab and also drop down and look for S-Log2 to Rec709. Okay, so S-Log2, S-Gamut, convert to Rec709. And of course, from the Sony website, you can also have the option to convert to Cine Plus, which just give you a more cinematic feeling. And also Rec709 Type A. So right now I'm going to use, use Rec709, the normal standard color profile. So now this footage is inside Rec709 color space. So the first thing obviously we can do is to reduce the exposure a little bit because we have overexposed this image by plus 2.0 stop. And then we can bring the black down. So until it touches the zero here. So this image is still too bright. So now we have the options to decrease the highlights, decrease the shadow. And after that, we can bring up the white just to make this footage look more and times to add some saturation inside the footage. So let's add some saturation. So as you can see the before and after, yes, before there is just no color, no saturation, no contrast. So this is when you have converted your S-Log2 footage to Rec709. And the last step for color correction is go down to the curve here. You can see this is the shadow, this is the mid-tone, and this is the highlight. So we can drag down the shadow. If you are feeling the mid-tone is still too bright, you drag down the mid-tone. So to make it more black. And we can also decrease the highlight or increase it. So this is the footage that you have color corrected. And also there's one last step that you can do. If you are shooting S-Log2, normally your details will be minus seven. So you can actually increase the sharpening. Yes, up to your liking. So just around 45%. So your image will be much more sharp if you like the sharpening effect. So guys, this is it, how to color correct your S-Log2 footage. So now I will show you how to color grade the customized S-Log2 profile. It is again super simple. Just go down to sgamma3.cine and here we are using sgamma3.cine S-Log3 to Rec709. Yes, I do not care about S-Log2. I find that it is okay using this input LUT. So just reduce a little bit of the saturation because when we are recording, we have pumped up the saturation to plus 20. We have noticed. So reduce the saturation to your liking. So immediately you can see that our Lumetric scope seems to be perfectly balanced. There's not much thing we want to do with this. Just maybe if you like the contrast, increase the contrast, increase the white, decrease the black, a little bit more and decrease the shadow. And also the highlight you can reduce a little bit. So after that we can use the RGB curve to fine tune our shadow. This is too dark, so maybe around here. Creative, we can increase the sharpness before and after. As you can see, the Lumetri scope, you can see once we color grade it, it will just expand. Of course, right now I'm using waveform. You can also change it to vector scope, histogram, parade. Depends on what you like. So I'll just use the histogram to show you guys because of convenience and also ease of use. I don't want you guys to think that S-Log2 is really difficult. So guys, this is it. How you calibrate the customized S-Log2 profile. 
and this footage is shot with Sony ZV-E10 and the kit lens. So for example, this footage, so let's color correct it. Again, the, this one is the S-Log3 input LUT. So here my waveform seems to be okay. So, but I want to achieve something different. So if I want to show the sky, just reduce the highlight. Yes, now you can see the sky. And if I don't want a shadow, you can just decrease the shadow. You see? Now you can show to see the sky clearly. So this is the point of shooting as log. You can have control over the sky's highlight and also the shadow. So right now let's increase. So here you can see, yes, this footage just seems like golden hour right now. Just now it doesn't look like this, you know. So this is before and after. So if you don't like the sky, you only want the bottom part of the, the footage, you can still achieve it. Just increase the shadow. I don't want to highlight normal on a normal highlight. So maybe this is a cool Sunday morning. So you want to change that. So this is it. A really standard profile if you want to preserve the shadow and not the sky. Okay guys, so now you know how to color correct S log 2 footage. Also, you might want to see how S log 2 will perform in nighttime. I myself do not really recommend shooting S log 2 in nighttime because it's really really dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because your footage may have those color noise, especially in the shadow area. I will show you some night footage here so you guys can see how it performs.